if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. That's why tonight we're going to talk about seven things that puppy owners need to know. Now, I see some people jumping into the chat. I see uh, Jordy, Jordy Rick, one of our Heart Dog supporters. Welcome. Um, um, we're excited to have this conversation with you guys tonight because this is the, you know, this is kind of thing is exactly why I started the YouTube channel here at McCann Dogs so that we can give you <coughs> some advice, some tips so that you don't go through a lot of the dog training struggles. It's amazing the difference it can make when you're making good choices up front because it's puppy training can be a lot of work. We've just gone through this with yep. our latest puppy. Yeah. And actually, I've got a couple examples tonight that are really going to be helpful for you if you are training a new dog. Hi, Amanda. Uh, to you guys. Yeah, Amanda Reinhardt. Uh, Hi, McCann team. Um, Maisie Daisy is here. Excited to have you here. <laughs> but um, we're going to show you a couple of examples of, you know, what? Uh, I just thought of a video that we should probably make. Some of like the unusual choices that we make or things that people aren't aware of. And they're like, wow, I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. But some of the choices we make up front for the first couple of weeks of puppies home and where you know the result where it is now it's why it was idea. helpful that would be really good because there's a few behaviors that five does now that were intentional up front and we'll see people i'll give you a sneak peek one is hurry up the amount of people that, that say like why are you saying hurry up to your puppy when they're peeing there's a reason for mm -hmm. that and it's actually you can train your dog to go pee or poop on command and uh, it's such an advantageous skill there's a million reasons why you'd want it. We can talk about it more later. But tonight we're going to talk specifically about the seven some seven things that you should know as a puppy owner. Uh, you know what? Let's just dive right into it. Let's do it. All right. On that note, I'm Ken Steep. I'm Kel McCann. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. <laughs> You're going to have to, you guys might not know, you were a singer. Yeah. At one time, like you were a legitimate singer. You got paid to go sing places. Yeah, I did. You never know that by the voice tonight though. No, I'm I'm having a hard time in the voice department, but yeah. I think once I get talking, it'll but by the end of this, it'll be better. Tora, Laura, Laura. <laughs> You'll be, we'll both I'm be singing, sure I'll be, be harmonizing. Right you guys are in for a treat tonight. <laughs> in case you have no idea who we are, you may have seen videos on our channel that uh, you know don't feature us. My name's Ken Steep. This is Kale McCann. We're professional dog trainer, dog trainers at McCann Dogs and at McCann Dogs. We train nearly 600 dogs every single week to overcome the same dog training challenges that you have. Mm -hmm. And in the train station, we like to dive a little bit deeper. We like to, you know, talk about some of the challenges that you're having right now. We like to answer some of the questions that come in to the chat and, uh, you know, give you that plan that I talked about at the opening. Give you some idea of the steps you should be taking, you know, the things that you should be thinking about, strategizing, looking forward to, uh, you know, Avoid the avoid the, the struggles, the, the, the biggest mistakes, the common mistakes that new puppy owners have. Now, one thing that I love is finding out early on where you guys are joining us from. So it's time for the roll call. Let us know where you're watching the show from. And um, uh, because I didn't pay a lot of attention in high school uh, and had to go back and learn about geography, I like to dive in. And <laughs> some of the places that uh, we have people watching from, it's really neat because, you know, we have people watching from all over the world. We have students online from, 60 countries, yeah. uh, places that I never would have thought YouTube or you know our, our online training would reach. Um, so it's really neat to find out where you guys are joining us from. Uh, Jordy Rick is actually one of our Heart Dog members, actually a songwriter. That's no pretty way. neat. That's yeah. cool. I hope I'm saying your name right. <clears throat> I can tell with some of the Very cool. Uh, but uh, Dan says, did you know? Yeah, absolutely. We, we train uh, 600 dogs in person, but oh, see, I think Dan missed it. How many countries online? Well, if you were paying attention just a moment ago, you'll know. Uh, <laughs> Poor Dan's multitasking like absolutely. the uh, like you wouldn't believe. Absolutely. Lexi says we need a McCann dog song from Kale and Ken. Oh, we actually have. I might have it on this on our studio Wait, setup. Wait, what are you gonna tell them? I'm not gonna. I was gonna play them the song from like the '80s or no, the might have been the oh, '90s. Oh, not us singing. Not us singing. Okay, you scared but me. But we a could sing. Mock. Ing. No, that's what? fine. That's fine. All right. That's yeah, no big deal. Uh, let me know in the chat if you Ken's understand what I was talking Ken's about. Ken's on a different level than a I totally am right now. Totally different level. Uh, I see people <laughs> here. Oh, I want to be us. on that level. We actually had a call with YouTube today, and um, we were talking to them. We have a lot of people who join us from Australia. Yeah, we which do. Which is very cool. We have lots of students online. We have online a lot of Australian students, Australia. yes. Yeah, which is really, They're really the best. Neat. We're excited to have you here. I see, uh, oh darn, I've lost it now. I moved it. Nina is joining us from uh, maybe New South Wales. NSW is the uh, short uh, form of that. Um, 
I see Delaware, uh, Beth joining us from Delaware, Jane from San uh, Diego, I think, um, Louise from Plat Platka, Florida, uh, Krista from Long Island, Bam and Mitch from Hamilton, not too far away, Betty Ann. Someone from the Netherlands, we yes. were just there. Central Illinois, Felton, Arkansas, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Massachusetts. Hi, Norma. George is from Washington, London, Ontario, uh, our jam not too far away, Wolcottville, all sorts of cool places. Uh, joining us, Gray, Maine, USA. See, I'll look that up now, Carrie. Um, I'm interested to find out where that is. So let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about new puppy ownership. As I mentioned earlier, we um, we we've just gone through the puppy process. We documented it and shared it with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> at least some of the steps. We were just talking the other day on a walk around the McCann Dogs Training Facility about how we've really. I mean. Uh, our focus is training yep. at the training facility. We like to make YouTube videos, uh, you know, on, on a pretty regular basis. But the reality is there's only so much time. You guys might not know this. I'm also a professional firefighter, have been for 20 years. Um, and, um, you know, we do our best to capture the moments, capture as much as we can to help you out, to document our experiences and give you training information that, uh, you know, will help you through dog training, regardless of the age of your dog. Five just well, grew up so darn fast. Did. He did. He grew up so fast. We, we captured captured as much as we could but there's also like lots of in-between stuff that mm -hmm. you, you might have talked about in online uh, in like a more you know our online setting but yeah, just happened and we couldn't catch it for the YouTube channel yeah so in tonight's show we're gonna try to talk about some of the, like the nitty-gritty stuff some of the refined stuff that might help you out if you have a puppy if you have a dog in training actually let me know in the chat the age of your dog it, maybe even the breed as well just put like how many weeks or, or, or months, you know, if they're several months old. How many weeks or months, and then the breed of dog that you've got. Amanda says, your puppy videos were so, uh, so helpful. Great way to pass the time while we waited to get our puppy. That's nice. also really common, yeah. We actually introduced a um, uh, pre-puppy package for, mm -hmm. for people who hadn't gotten their puppy yet. But I love, I love that people are so, you know, um, are looking forward to yeah they're planning they're mm -hmm. ahead of the game if that's something here's here's the reality if i had planned better um you know i i might have avoided some of the challenges that i had when i first got deegan my black lab that brought me to mccann dogs because i had made all the wrong choices and it really helped me when i became a professional dog trainer because i could see like i, I could empathize you know i could truly empathize mm -hmm. with the choices that our students are making and say like oh you know what that's not a good idea let's try this uh <clears throat> because you know i'd been there and i just didn't know yeah. and that's that is the motivation for this youtube channel let's talk a little bit about the things that every puppy owner should have like a quick shopping list of some stuff that we th know to be uh, helpful so that you you know you you have what you need to make great choices for your puppy mm -hmm, for sure I'm going to reference the list so I don't r r forget anything. Um, first thing is you need to have um, some type of collar. And this probably seems like, well, obviously we need to have a collar. Um, but like what kind of collar? Because there's so many different options out there. And yeah. there are some that are definitely better for puppy training than others. Um, we recommend, regardless of the dog, that you get your dog comfortable and your puppy comfortable used to wearing just a well-fit um, flat buckle collar yeah. right from the beginning yep. and uh, flat buckle collar just like nylon or it doesn't really matter what the material is really but I would suggest using one that you can adjust really really easily because they grow so fast when they're really little um, yeah. well fit well fit means that you can just fit two fingers between their neck and their collar um, most people have collars that are too loose on their puppies necks and that can be challenging for getting control it also is a risk factor yeah. in case they back up and slip out of it and their puppies they don't know how to do anything yet so yeah. it should be well fit well something we often hear <clears throat> is uh you know someone will put a, a new collar on their puppy and they're like oh he hates it. He just scratched that all mm. the whole time. I just took it off. Bad idea because we need to talk a little bit about control. We're going to yeah. mention a couple other things where you can have better control of your puppy. But that's just a stage. In fact, we may have videoed some of that when Five had his first collar. He was itching a lot when we first put, yeah. it, put it on. And yeah, will fuss with it. It's mm. like wearing a new pair of glasses. You're like, what are these things? He maybe itched at it for like 
one, maybe two days, and then he was over it. But we keep the collar on the dog all of the time. We also keep the collar on the puppy when they're in their crate. A lot of people will, will remove the collar at that stage. Uh, but because our collars are very well fit, we usually get high quality collars. They're not going to fall off. They're not going to get caught on anything. Yeah. Um, and that way it's easy to clip the line or the leash on every time they come out. We always have a way to get control, um, you know, gracefully with the puppy. So a well, well fit collar is really, really important. Again, you got to adjust it all of the time as they grow. Um, I see a few people asking about um, harnesses uh, in there. There are there are some breeds that um, that do well on a harness. Um, unfortunately, harnesses um, often it, the if you think long term, like later on down the road when we have our dogs trained, we really want our dogs to learn to walk on a loose leash and learn not to pull. And in our experience, sometimes once the dogs uh, start on a harness, it's really easy to pull. And then there's a lot of dogs that rehearse pulling for months and months and months and months. And then all of a sudden, you know, we put a collar on and they think, wait a second, why can't I pull on this just like I pulled on that? So we recommend just having a regular collar on and not using harness. There are obviously some breeds that, um, that you know, are better for harnesses than others, depending on their breathing capabilities. But um, I think somebody asked about a Frenchie. Frenchies can wear normal collars. They don't have to wear yeah, harnesses. I think there's a lot of like uh, <clears throat> it's uncertainty a, It's a fad. Yeah, well, I think it's a lot of uncertainty about uh, call, callers and, and uh, all those kinds of things. All sorts of bad information. Yeah. There. Mary H. Dropping Hi, super Mary. sticker. Thank you for the super sticker, Mary. Yeah, you just um, have to, it has to be well fit. But all of our dogs, all of our dogs have <clears throat> harnesses, mm-hmm. uh, but they've pretty fancy ones. Yeah, quite fancy. Colorful, embroidered. Yeah, they're fancy. Canada leaves. But they've earned <laughs> those harnesses. You know, when you, they also don't pull. <laughs> Again, I mean, we're looking a little bit further down the line, but when actually Instructor Carol, uh, we did a video with her talking about uh, why collars are better than harnesses for leash walking training. There's a million tips in there, really handy. Maybe Dan will be able to drop the link for that. I don't remember what the title is. But having head control is massively helpful. So being able to control where your puppy's going, control where your young dog in training <clears> is going, a <throat> lot easier to do that. we giving them very specific information. A lot easier to do that when you have control of their neck. So um, we won't dive into that uh, too much more, but collar is better than a harness uh, in uh, 99% of those cases. Mm -hmm. A leash and a house line. Maybe one in the same for the first week home, but we definitely um, encourage you to have a house line for your puppy. it's something, this is something that we've brought up in all kinds of videos. We, we published a video on it years and years ago, and people were like, why on earth would I have a leash on my dog <laughs> in the house? And then they tried why it. Why on earth would you not? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, it's basically an extension of you. It allows you to get control of your puppy without having to chase them around. It allows mm-hmm. you to redirect them from chewing on the baseboards or, you know, digging into your backpack, your gym bag uh, from a, a distance. It allows you to step on that line before they start jumping up when someone uh, comes in the room room. It gives you so much more control. Something like a house line is going to entirely change your puppy training and I, I can't recommend, recommend mm-hmm. them enough. It, it turns you into a puppy training superhero. It mm-hmm. really does. It gives you great timing and it allows you to maintain control of your puppy. So use a house line. It can be, honestly, uh, I mean, we have a couple of different things that we use for house lines. In fact, we give all of our students uh, something in, in person. Um, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's like a, I forgot what it is, nylon line or something like mm-hmm. that. But all you have to do is go to your local dollar store get a cheap leash cheap thin leash. order it off amazon honestly it's or, just or so order easy. it off of amazon yep. for sure and then cut the loop off of that leash so that it's not like getting hung up on stuff if you leave the loop on <laughs> maybe you have like floor vents or something that it gets caught on or maybe they're going around mm-hmm. a door and it gets caught on that but if you cut the loop off and then we will always like burn the ends just so it's you know it doesn't have like straggly pieces um you know uh, uh that allow your puppy to move around freely in your home so uh using a house line so advantageous for new puppy owners. Absolutely. A bed. Now, this is something that we use uh, often. Yep. Uh, that we use often. But I think people, people, they might get a bed for their puppy, but they're not using it the way we are. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about how we use a bed with our puppy training. Yeah. <clears throat> so we uh, always get our puppies a bed. We don't necessarily actually give, get our puppies, well, 
we happen to have multiple dogs, so our new puppies yeah. don't get their own new bed. We have dog beds all over our house, um, and we yeah, use these beds to um, teach our dogs right from the beginning how to go and lie down and chill out on them. And so we love to implement this right from the beginning with our baby puppies, um, just with a bit of food on their nose. We just lure them onto the bed, lure them into a little down position, and we just give them rewards for maintaining a down position as we stand right with them. There's no stay. We don't walk away. We don't expect them to stay on the bed all by themselves. We just build value for being on the bed, and we do that right from the beginning um, until eventually that we can use our that skill to our advantage. Where we are a little bit um, um, less uh, open to using a bed would surprisingly be inside the crate because we find that sometimes with uh, young puppies if they have bedding in their crate there are some dogs not all dogs of course but some puppies that will have accidents on the bedding and then they'll just push the bedding off to the side so that they can still lie on a nice clean crate. And um, if your puppy is starting to have accidents inside the crate, that can sometimes be a hard thing to fix. But one of the easiest ways to prevent or stop it is to remove the bedding. Um, in our particular puppy's um, situation, he never went to the bathroom on the crate, but he went through a very long period of time where he wanted to chew apart the bedding. Yeah. He would yeah. chew it, he would want to rip it. And um, you know, when he was a baby, baby puppy, we started with no bedding. And then after, you know, several weeks of him being home, he was doing really well. We tried putting it in. He tried to chew it. We took it out. I waited another month or two, tried to put it in. Now he's 11 months old and he's got... 500 beds in his crate because he's a whippet right. cross and he likes to be comfortable but princess in the pea he is definitely the princess yeah. in the pea yeah. uh, but we had to wait a bit until the chewing phase until he you know he understood the the thing so just be careful about bedding in the crate it is a bit dog dependent something you need to to learn about your own dog but i would definitely recommend getting an additional bed or mat or something and start uh, working on teaching them to lie on it I bet you we probably had a vi have a video on how to teach that step a by few. step. <laughs> In fact, we do. Um, yeah. Uh, um, and having your dog, you know, if they're going to be out, your puppies, I'm just thinking about like how when we were doing the puppy experience, you know, when we were had the puppy out in the kitchen and, you know, uh, we Kale talked about a crate, also a an important management tool for your puppy. Use your crate to make sure that they stay safe. They can't make bad choices. It's going to speed up your house training and your potty training. It's such a useful tool. A well-sized crate uh, is just going <laughs> to sort of take shift some of the, uh, I mean, we talk a lot about supervision. Supervision is critical throughout the, you know, while your puppy's learning. But um, it's impossible for you to watch your puppy 24 hours a day. It's just unreasonable. And good supervision means you're watching them. You're actively watching your puppy, which is unreasonable. So having it somewhere that your puppy can, you know, you do your training, you do some play and fun, maybe some snuggles, whatever. They go out for the pee, they go in their crate because they're going to want to sleep. They're going to want to relax if you've, you know, engage them enough. They can go in their crate and now you can go do your work. You can go do chores. You can go deal with the family, whatever needs to be done. And you're not thinking, mm -hmm. worrying about, oh boy, what's what are the they puppy getting, getting into? into? Yeah, yeah, for exactly. sure. Um, a chew toy is a valuable thing. It's a great pastime for the puppy as they go into their kennel. It's, it, it's something that satiates that need to like use their mouth and, and you know, like chewing, chewing on the bed or the, your gym bag or the, uh, you know, bottom of your cha fancy chairs that you just got. Uh, a chew toy is going to be a great way to get some of that, uh, that focused chewing energy out, but it doesn't mean that those other things aren't going to happen. It's really mm -hmm. important to understand that. A chew toy is just something that you can give your puppy to hang out with on mm -hmm. their bed. Yeah. You know, while you're watching them, while you're hanging out with them, they can chew on that chew toy. Mm -hmm. Really, really helpful thing to have. Also, um, you know, if you've got a chew toy like a Kong, our friends at Kong sent us 2,500 Kongs, in fact, to do a video series as well as donate to uh, some charities and, uh, and shelters and things. But um, something like a Kong is a great puppy toy because you can put some some of their food, maybe some of their kibble in it. You can put some maybe some peanut butter in it and then put it in their crate. They'll be like dying to get into their crate. They can't wait to be in there so they can get at that thing. Those kinds of chew toys are really valuable, especially when you have a young puppy in the house who's like constantly getting into things. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that a chew toy, a lot of people think that all toys are chew toys. Uh, or a good point. they give their dog a toy and they say, oh, well, they just chew it. Well, that's because that toy is not a chew toy. <laughs> right. So what we mean yeah. by chew toy are cho ch uh, toys that are actually designed specifically for safe chewing. That a dog could actually lie down, you know, hold it between their paws and chew away and no 
things would come off to be ingested to be potentially dangerous. So it is important that when you are getting chew toys for your puppy, you are getting safe and reliable uh, toys. There's lots of fantastic products out there. Um, There's also some horrible products out there that are very dangerous to give your dog, even though they say for dogs on them. So those are, these are all things that we go over quite intensely in our our online programs, but um, it is important that you would feel comfortable that your dog could lie and chew on that particular item yeah. without supervision. Yeah. Um, you know, right. we we give, um, so five right now, he's upstairs in our kitchen, he's in his crate, and he has uh, a Kong and he has a chew bone in there so that if he's bored up there while we're down here, he has something to do and I feel confident that I don't have to watch him. I know he's not gonna hurt himself because I'm not gonna put him in there with an item that he could ingest in any way. So, uh, Brandon Sherry, I'm surprised to see that my puppy's getting <coughs> bits off the Nyla bone. Mm, good question. That's not safe. Is it? We've talked to a lot of vets about this. Uh, so, yeah. do you want to mention? Yeah. Do you want to cover that? Yeah. So, um, Nyla bones are actually awesome. The bits that come off, um, they're typically, if it is Nyla bone, if it's a high quality bone, the bits come off of it. That's actually good because what happens is underneath, like when the bits are gone and the bits are very small, um, it creates a very uneven surface and that does an excellent job at uh, cleaning your dog's teeth. It really is great. Uh, the bits that come off should be so small that if they happen flex. to choose them, they're yeah. flex, yeah, that's yeah, a better yeah. word. Um, they could uh, ingest them and it wouldn't upset them in any way. Um, there are other items out there that have like if bigger chunks are coming off then those probably aren't the best thing all dogs have different um strengths of of or desires to chew so you do have to learn a little bit about what kind of puppy you have and um not breed (laughs) like the strength of chewer that you have and then our sort of uh, general recommendation um is that if you're you know if the bone says for medium-sized dogs and you have a medium-sized dog Buy a bone that's for large dogs. Always buy sizes that are bigger for for your particular breed for what that's uh, recommended because it's just going to be that much safer. Those of the dog you don't have any chances of it, you know, getting caught or anything like that. Uh, Jordy Rick, heart dog supporter. It's okay <coughs> to get a four month old puppy a proper bone. So I think one of the problems that we run into, people run into with uh, actual bones is how rich they are, mm-hmm. as well as like what's the prep for that. You know, maybe you buy it at a pet store and you give it to your dog and you leave it with them for several minutes. I mean, at four months, yeah. they're a little bit older, they can make better choices, but they are terribly rich. I, I have thoughts on this. Yep. Um, if your dog is a like a raw fed dog, um, then sometimes something like this would be okay, but the bones do, do need to be raw. You should never be giving your dog any type of cooked bone or processed bone because those can uh, break easily, they can splinter easily, and then they become very dangerous. Um, any of those bones that you get at the pet store that are like, they're processed and they're covered in plastic, they're just horribly unhealthy for your dog. So I would stay far away from those. Um, And then lastly, if your dog doesn't get these types of bones on a regular basis, um, like Ken said, it could upset their stomach. And uh, I just said lastly, but I have one more thing. Um, If you have um, a young, if you have a, a young dog that is in training, I have found from our students' dogs that there is more risk of dogs being possessive over high value bones like that while they're in training because they don't, they haven't learned the rules of the road yet. So I, my recommendation would be to use things that are a little bit lower value until you have a better sense of, of your dog and then decide, you know, at a later time whether you want to give your dog. And if it's any help, we do not give our dogs um, any bones like that. Our dogs live a live very boring yet healthy life they get nylon bones they get yak cheese bones the occasional antler mm, yeah that's pretty much where the buck stops benny benny bones my dogs love those that brand nylon bone i think the problem that so many people have is that they just give it to the dog and then they don't pay attention that's right yeah Yeah, that's where we see a lot of issues but i like this question from southern bozas uh, I, we're not going to hang around too long on chew bones, but this is stuff that I see over and over and over again, people making the mistake. My puppy isn't interested in the Nyla bones. They need it all for advice for getting them interested. A couple of our moderators, Instructor Shannon, maybe <coughs> Instructor Robbie had mentioned, you can put it in some meat juices. Uh, we actually have a video specifically on this topic, so um, 
search channel for that. But you can do something, often it's because it's like that smooth, shiny surface. Like something as simple as like rubbing it on the driveway or out on, you know, on the parking lot, getting getting some of the Scuff texture to it, for sure. Uh, maybe you crush a big workout and then you put it in your armpit. Maybe, you, you know, you stick it in your gym shoes so it's smelly and like it has that like really like smelly smell. just put it in smell. your uh, laundry hamper upstairs. Yeah, also, well, I mean, yep, that might be it. <laughs> but you really want it to like smelly. Uh, those things can be advantageous. If you have another dog, maybe your other dog uh, likes uh, Nyla bones and you could start getting chewed. It's often because it's so smooth and, and the outside is like not accessible for the dog. <laughs> With the amount of uh, questions on bones, I feel like we could do literally a video on it. Yeah. I think so. I think so. <laughs> and it would just be our recommendation based on our experience because lots of people will have their own opinions on bones, that's for sure. Uh, interactive toy. This is going to be the most important toy you buy for your dog because mm -hmm. this is the one that builds out I'm telling you, relationship. It it allows you to exercise your tires dog quickly. Them yeah, tires them. Uh, tires them Helps out. Helps teach run. valuable skills. One hundred percent. You start working on your out mm -hmm. com command. We show that a lot. And in fact, uh, I'm gonna see if I can pin this to the thing. This works. Um, we I just pinned it in the chat. Our, our puppy talks. Wow. We use these. Yeah, we use these. Uh, Constantly. We had, in fact, we use this with like all kinds of dogs, <clears throat> but uh, with a puppy, we're using this, I would say daily. Would you yeah. say oh, we're yeah. using a puppy oh, yeah, dog yeah, daily? Yeah, uh, we do all sorts of things. Actually, a video, if you have a puppy in training, you absolutely need to check with the video Saturday morning. It, it's going to be so helpful for you. It doesn't matter what age the puppy is. Uh, it's going to be, it's good information and I make sure you check that out. But uh, in that video, we do talk about uh, something like the puppy tug, using an interactive mm -hmm. toy. Now, the beauty of an interactive toy is that it's fun because you're there. An interactive toy, mm -hmm. you don't give to your dog and they go off and chew it. It's the kind of thing that's engaging. You know, your dog starts to understand. You play that, like, with them. Yeah, you play with them with that toy. This is the kind of thing where they get to, you know, engage with you, burn off, burn off tons of energy. Imagine the, imagine how your puppy starts to learn your value. Remember. We need to show our dogs that we're worth listening Aww. to. An interactive toy is a great way to do that. Also great for working on your response to name, your recall, working on anything where you want to like build some of that drive up. Great, great product. Uh, any An interactive toy like our puppy tug. doesn't have to be our puppy tug though. Maybe you have like a longer rope tug or mm -hmm. you know something that you can engage with your puppy. Uh, actually, we um, use a... Um, Oh, what's it called? A holy roller. Mm -hmm. so that's kind of fun for like in the house. Yeah. You can roll it around and it's got holes in it so you can like play tug with the dog. Doesn't as matter well. if it bounces off the wall. Yeah, or the exactly. Couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that interactive toy, I would say, is probably the most underestimated or the under most undervalued product in your puppy on your puppy shopping list. Mm -hmm. Things that you should have. Um, I really like um, Fallon's comment there. I purchased two toys from you guys, from your guys' store, the one with the pocket and the one with, that you can shove the treat into. Oh, cool. Uh, that's called our retrieve trainer. Um, and my non-loving, my non-toy loving Great Dane now loves to play with me. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah, sometimes combining the toy and the food together with totally. a few, like, um, retrieving training type toys um, can make all the difference. That's great. Yeah. You, and if you, if you guys are interested, if you have a food motivated dog that doesn't love toys as much, go over to McCandogs.store, check our store out because we have specifically designed products for those kinds of dogs. Mm -hmm. Treats. What kind of treats are we using in our puppy training? Um, <clears throat> well, with the treats, um, I really like to use, um, well, two things. When I have a puppy, I actually start out with lots of different types of treats because I want to try and learn what my puppy's um, rating of treats is because as I move into, you know, the couple weeks of having the puppy home, I want to be able to determine what my puppy feels like is like, you know, level one, two, three, four, five being the best uh, type of treat so that I can start to use, you know, the different values of treats to my advantage. Um, I try if I can when I'm at home to use um, their kibble to the best of my ability because I, and I will use the um, um, amount of food in their meal so that they're not getting their meals and then food all on top of that uh, for too long. So I'll take some of their kibble from their breakfast or their dinner and use that for training. If I want to have a little bit more attention from the puppy though, then I will usually use higher value treats. There's lots of great treats uh, out there on the market, but if you want um, some suggestions on some of the things that we do, um, we love to use like cut up block cheese. Um, we also use uh, hot dog wieners. You can just use them raw. Um, 
uh, chicken wieners specifically the dogs really like. I don't know if chicken wieners are sold in all countries. I don't, know I don't think so. I think people we always like it's a Canadian chicken thing. Chicken wieners? Yeah, yeah. What is that, eh? Beef wieners, turkey wieners, whatever. But in, Ca- in Canada, we have chicken wieners. Uh, also beef wieners. We're not weird. We all don't just eat chicken wieners. That would be strange. Um, let's move on from that. The clip of this section <laughs> is... Anyways, you can cut those up. Dogs really, really like that. Um, and then um, Five's absolute favorite treat of all time. I make them every single Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Is uh, our tuna treats. Uh, we have these little tuna brownie type treats with just tuna egg flour. Super simple. Um, healthy for the puppies as well. There's not a lot of those extra stuff in it. Um, but uh, that's really great. You want to use something that is sort of moist that they can eat and work at the same time. We won't train our dogs with anything really crunchy and big because then the dogs will do a thing and then they'll chew for 10 years before they're ready to do something 10 else. 10 years is a long time. I know, you can't like, get anything done. Yeah. Um, yeah, so something small and then variety is helpful too when you're working with a puppy because they have a very small attention span. Yeah, we um, uh, we have a link to the on the channel. Chicken so we, wiener, they like that. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> People find it so funny. that. I we, know. Um, it's not weird to us, but I guess I think it's weird now that everybody comments on it. Yeah. Uh, lots of links dropped a link to the uh, homemade tuna treats. Uh, and Kale literally, I can't, actually, I think I'm in that video. I am, in fact, in that video. Mm-hmm. The tuna I have video. perfected I your recipe. I can't stand tuna, tuna, the smell of tuna, anything tuna. It's I find it disgusting. <laughs> the dogs absolutely love it. They go yep. crazy for it. And not just our dogs. Like, we have, like, hundreds of dogs every single week. If we bring out the tuna treats as an instructor, the dogs are like, oh, okay. I'll follow you anywhere. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So having, like, a super valuable uh, yeah. tool, uh, treat, toy. I like it specifically, treat. too, because my puppy has a pretty sensitive style. Stomach, and if he has like treats that are from like a bag that you would buy from the store, he will get he'll get poops, he'll get diarrhea. Yeah. Um, so I like to use tuna treats because it's a little kinder to his belly, and I don't have to worry about how many I give him, yeah. and he really loves them. Yeah. Um, food, we will just breeze over. You hopefully your dog comes home with your puppy comes home with uh, some of whatever food they've been on, and you can talk to your veterinarian. Maybe your local pet store can talk to you a little bit about transitioning because every dog is different. We have no recommendations specifically for puppy food, um, but that is also consideration. <laughs> it should be on your shopping list, thinking about uh, if you're getting food with a puppy or if you're uh, uh, transitioning onto something else. What's well, so funny? Um, Dan said that he could go for a tuna melt right now. Gross. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> Um, collar and line. The, ne- the next thing that you absolutely need for your dog. We talked a little bit about this. Collar and line. It is going to, uh, we did uh, breeze over the fact that you need to get your puppy used to their collar. You should have your puppy uh, 100% of the time that they're out of their crate because you're going to be supervising. Your puppy should be dragging that house line. And the time that you're like, ah, we won't use it this time. That's when you're going to discover that you mm-hmm. should have used it. Uh, your The house line is such a valuable tool. Man, it's just it just changes everything. And honestly, not just for puppies, for like any dog in training. So, yeah. you know, um, uh, when we brought Mac in, into our home, uh, he was a little bit older. I think he was eight or nine years old. Mm-hmm. But I was wor- I was always worried about him having accidents. He was a, in the house. a barn dog. Like he lived yeah, in a barn was, before we got him. He was a dog. sheep herding working yeah, dog. That's right. So you know, uh, Mac is the perfect dog to put something like a house line on it because we don't know how, if he's going to chew stuff, but we have to supervise. We him. didn't even know if he was house trained. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so he's the kind of dog that yeah. I, we bring him into the house. House line goes on so that we have that little bit of extra control. Yeah. You know, if you're not sure, there should be a house line on. Now, when do you remove the house line? If, you're, if you've are if you been diligent about having your puppy drag a house line, how do you know when it's time that they don't need it anymore? Yeah, we get asked that all of the time. Yeah. Basically, when you can start to remove the house line and have your dog just off leash in the house, um, it's when you can't remember the last time you had to use the house line for something. Yeah. Um, it's really important, you know, with our method of training, with the McCann method, our goal is to make choices and set our dog up that in most most of the day they are making good choices about what they're doing because of the way we mold and shape them and train them and manage them and one of the ways that we 
are able to do that is by utilizing the crate and more specifically utilizing a house line. Yeah. So that if I'm in the kitchen or if I'm in the living room and I have my puppy out with me and I'm, you know, trying to make dinner or whatever, and I'm trying to keep an eye on my dog, if my puppy starts to get into something, well, I can just step on that house line and immediately have control over my puppy instead of my puppy being able to grab things and run away. You know, our puppies are not, they're just like your puppies. They're exactly the same. We don't get magically trained puppies. We have to do all the work ourselves as well. And five, when he was puppies, he did try to grab things and run sure. away because yeah. he's a yeah. puppy. Yeah. But he that's tried. That's what puppies do. Yeah, it's so normal. Yeah. But because he had his house line on and I'm a super duper supervisor, the second he grabbed it, I stepped on his house line, took it from him. And before the fun even started, he was like, oh. Oh, man. And then I redirected him quickly to something that he should have. He had so many moments where he went to make that poor choice, but I was right there to say, nope, buddy, that's not right. This is what I needed to do instead. Um, He didn't have opportunity to rehearse making the, the choices that a lot of other puppies make because I'm able to utilize the house line and stop him before things really get bad. So it's honestly like the secret to dog training almost. To management, one hundred percent. We've had, I've heard stories from students that um, one lady was telling me that she <laughs> dropped her medication, and uh, she's older, not as mobile. She was worried that her puppy was going to get it, and mm. she stepped on the line and stopped the dog from getting because yeah. she would have never gotten down there in time. Jeez. It's just so advantageous. I, you know, I, I find it interesting when people are like, oh, I don't really want to put a leash on my puppy in the house. I'm like, I'm, listen, I get it but it's worth it. It is so mm-hmm. worth it because you want to be giving your puppy the best information possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about giving your puppy the best information possible, we'll go over some of this stuff, but we can dive in specifically for you and your dog in our Puppy Essentials program. Maybe we can briefly go over that, what's involved in Puppy Essentials. You can hang out with Kale yeah. on uh, on Zoom calls. Yeah, uh, yeah. our Puppy Essentials uh, program is fabulous. It's um, designed specifically uh, for puppies uh, under the age of four months. Um, and it's exercises that are all related to development, relationship building. We work a lot on teaching you how to prevent nipping and biting or how to stop nipping and biting because sometimes you join the program and you've already had this problem happening. Yeah. Of course, we talk to you about the normal things like crate training and house training, and, and we have a full training program that you follow, step-by-step instructions and videos and all kinds of things if you're taking it online. We have in, in-person in classes as well. Um, but specifically for our online program, something that we've worked really hard on on is we wanted people to make sure that they felt really supported yeah. when they were taking the program. We didn't want, want people just sitting at home watching a video and then trying to figure it out. So um, although you will do that, you also will have the guidance of our instructors. Yeah. So we have an amazing team of instructors that are there daily um, answering questions, reviewing videos. We have weekly live Zoom calls where you get to join myself and uh, Robbie and Shannon and Steve and all these fabulous instructors and we can answer your questions and talk to you about different things Um, and then we also have a really great support group where you get to see and hear um, all of the questions and videos and feedback from all of the other students in the programs Um, and it's always nice to know because and we said earlier we have class uh, students from you know over 60 countries uh, in the world and there's people who are living in you know Burlington, Ontario, Canada, that are having the same issues as yeah. someone in Germany, That's interesting. as someone yeah. in Japan, yeah. Yeah. as someone in For everybody. Sure. All the puppy, yeah. all nobody's puppy is worse than someone else. It's like yeah. everybody thinks like, oh my gosh, my puppy's terrible. He's one of kind. Yeah, you know, they're just they're learning, totally. and they and they we all have very similar problems, and I think that that support is really helpful because you you know we've seen all of it millions of times, and um, you know we can say. Oh, We've seen this a bunch of times. This is what you need to do to work yeah. on that. And it just becomes a lot less stressful. It's nice. You mentioned a support group. And I sort of, I, f- I thought it was funny because that's not what I immediately think of a support group. But there's literally a group of people who are going through the same things you yeah. are. And you're like, oh, you know what, Fred, I get there's it. There's like I therapy sessions that happen in these groups. Yeah. Like long, lifelong friendships are made yeah. in these totally. groups. Like it warms my it. heart to it. read these groups. Yeah. It's so awesome. And I, I don't want to sound too pitchy about this kind of stuff, but this is... It took us so long to make this program. Yeah. We've like it's so focused on making yeah, it great. It. Yeah, because this is the kind of program we mm. want you to have. This is the kind of thing that we can change your puppy training. Mm-hmm. So anyway, let's move on. <coughs> crate. We talked a little bit about the crate. It is unquestionably the best way that you can manage your puppy when you can't supervise them. Love me, Crate. A couple tips. Our puppy, in fact, in our one of our 24-hour uh, new puppy videos, maybe when we got Euchre, 
uh, we show bringing the puppy home. Let's talk about crate use the first couple days, but also like out until we don't need it anymore. Yeah. Let's briefly mention that. Yeah, so just an overview. Um, when we uh, crate train our dogs, um, we obviously have some specific exercises that we do with the dogs to help get the dog to go in on command and to have uh, more comfort in the crate. But one of the things that we do that I think makes the biggest difference is we just start using it. We just start using it. The yeah. very first, you know, the first you know, hour that our puppies are home. Of course, we have them come home. We have a play. We have a snuggle because everybody's so excited that yeah. they're there. Oh, sure. And then once the puppies had their pee and they've had their big first play of the of the house, they go in their crate for a nap. That the, that's when they usually go right use it right away. Um, and we will um, use it the very first night. And it's just something that we integrate right from the beginning. And I often think to myself, like, why have I never had these crate training issues? Like, I've never experienced that with my puppies. And if I think about what I do, it's because I use the crate right off the bat. And I just don't even make it a thing. I'm not worried about putting in the crate. I don't make it a negative thing. Um, and it's just the dogs really just get comfortable with it so quickly. Um, but we also have a lot of strategy things that we do with the crates that make it easier. Where we put the crate, we keep the crate with us often when, the, when they first come home. And then we transition them. That, to be away from us so that they're not dependent on us being there. We don't just use the crate when we are going to sleep or where we're going out. We use it all day long for many different circumstances so we don't start creating separation anxiety or any type of anxiety with the crate. So there's certain decisions that we make with the crate training that allow the crate training to go a lot more smoothly so that you can pop your puppy in a crate and go out for lunch and not be stressed about how they are and how they're feeling and what's happening. We have to talk about that puppy essential student that was just beside herself. Oh my goodness. And so how you, you walked her through the process. I Let's know. talk about that briefly. Yeah, I did have I mean, a just summary. Yeah, I did have a student not long, long ago. I did a, a Zoom private with her. Um, she lives, I can't remember, somewhere in the States. Uh, but she was having a heck of a time. She couldn't, basically her life was on hold because she she couldn't leave the house because her puppy was just ruining everything and it was wild and crazy and she would try to put it in the crate and it would just scream and you know so she basically just didn't leave her house so we did a, a zoom private and we talked about you know what to do with the crate and um i gave her a bit of homework and she sent me an email um like two or three days later i was surprised at how fast it was and she said i'm emailing you from whatever restaurant she was at she's like i'm out for lunch with my girlfriend and the first time in like five months and i'm so excited and um she had one of those um camera things at home and so she sent oh, me this Polaroid? um i don't know it was like a, a nest camera oh okay yeah. and she sent me a screenshot of the puppy sleeping in the crate so she was spying on the dog while right. she was at the restaurant which was totally That's fine and the puppy was sleeping and she was just so happy so I, that was such a nice nice uh story ending <laughs> um jordy rick uh her dog supporter have you ever thought of taking your training worldwide to schools in different countries and uh, open up different countries and mechanic school? About once a year, we get a uh, maybe even more. We get people coming in to invest, wanting to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have a mechanic franchise. We had recently we had a, a large. How can I say this? We had a streaming service uh, that approached us about making content and. Um, <laughs> The trouble, we are so hyper-focused on being good at what we're doing mm -hmm. that anything outside of like uh, being great at teaching dogs or Kale, in Kale's case, you have tra traveled all over the world to teach dog agility. Yeah. 21-time 20, world champion of dog yeah. agility. But I'm not teaching them... I'm not teaching them about what I do as a teacher. I'm teaching them how to That's right. do the thing. That's I think right. what they're asking is uh, be, be more be yeah. But so different. if it if if it doesn't if it isn't we talk about this. We, the answer about, is no. It's about value. <laughs> it's about value. But in, in we thought about it. But we it's thought about, about it in the answers we don't want to do. For sure. Yeah. And if it's just even outside of the uh, thing, you know, if we're not creating content that'll specifically help you yeah. to have a well-behaved four-legged family member, then it's kind of off the table. And yeah. We should buy that. We have but a certain expectation and quality of training that we yeah. that we believe in. 100%. And unless it's sort of done by the people that we train. We're so strict about this that anybody who teaches at our school goes through a minimum year-long apprenticeship program. Yeah. And before they enter that, there's like a whole whack load of things that they have to do to even get into it. So we're pretty strict yeah. about it because we have a certain way that we like to do things, For certain sure. quality. 
So, speaking of that, uh, huge thank you to our Heart Dog supporters. All great questions. And, and those of you in the chat uh, asking some really great questions tonight. We talked about the crate, why it's valuable. Uh, we'll feed our dogs in the crate. We will, uh, you know, there's a, a, crate, a couple of crate training videos where we'll, like, toss a, t toss a treat in and then get them excited, let them go, let them run in the crate. Like, these are all sorts of ways mm -hmm. we can get the dog to use, used to using the crate. But make sure you're using it, like, bringing it with you. So if you're in the living room, that might be, and you want your puppy to be in their crate, that's a great time to bring the crate into the living room. And then you can stay close. You can, mm -hmm. you know, maintain visual contact. You can tell them to, to, you know, tap on the crate if they start being fussy, but you can also praise them when they're making great choices. So mm -hmm. zipping through crate use, uh, lots of videos on the channel, but crate is a valuable tool. Mm -hmm. Next thing is house training. And I actually set aside a video from the first week home with our adorable puppy. Five Alive. Five Alive Lou. And um, I want to talk about house training. House training starts the very first day that you come home. Now, we're going to talk about, because we live in an area where you can we can take our puppies outside, yep. uh, but if you live in some place that it's not safe to take your puppy outside, the exact same rules apply for puppy pads, which I, we don't love because it's confusing to the puppy, but if you have to use a puppy pad or something like that, a litter box, I've heard all sorts of things, um, the same rules apply. Just replace the word outside with like to the pad or, or to the mat or whatever that thing needs to be. Maybe you're in an apartment. Having a, a great spot for something like a pad or like one of those uh, mats is outside the door, like a definitive line that your puppy can go outside and do their thing uh, on with supervision, of course. But anyway. I just want to say one thing. Yeah. We would be happy to travel to teach seminars if anybody in anywhere in Europe Hawaii, Bermuda, wants to have us come to teach you about dog training, we'd be happy to do it. Uh, yeah. We just don't want to open a school there. <laughs> yeah. But we'll come, teach you, and then go home again. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Did someone ask about that? Yeah, I think there's a... You had a question. A, uh, ...idea about seminars versus, like, opening a business somewhere else. Oh, We're not going to do that. But, you, yeah, so, I, I, I've traveled literally all yeah. over the world teaching agility seminars. I know. I'm um, so envious. You so actually fun. have a couple of requests uh, 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 outstanding for, like... <laughs> Singapore. New, Singapore, New Zealand. New Zealand, So, yeah. I mean, lucky. Just yeah, it's pretty day. cool. <laughs> um, Shana Harris, I'm going to get to your uh, super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I haven't tooted tonight, so I'll drop this one. Tooty -toot. <laughs> She's turning the train station yellow. Nice. I'm going to come back to her question in just a second. But we're talking about house training the very it. first day. Um, oh, that's okay. That's I can probably get through that. Uh, very first day with the, the pop, uh, potty training or house training. Um, can begin right away. Uh, Shana says, I can't afford the life skills course, but you guys have helped me so much. Here's some appreciation. Oh, that's so nice. You, you've by far been the most in-depth free access YouTube channel. Thank hey, you very much. Shana. Awesome. That's, that's really nice. So glad we've been Also, help. thanks for turning the lights yellow. Mm -hmm. I want to take you back to uh, <laughs> several months ago when we had our adorable puppy, Five Alive, in the house. Um, I, I don't think He's you need to so monitor the small. audio. <clears throat> Talk about potty training the first couple of days home, Kale. Yeah. You know, what, what, uh, because it, the same thing applies to your puppy who's like four weeks if you're still struggling with house training. Yeah. Um, my tactic the first couple of days home is a bit different than like a first couple of weeks home. The first couple of days home, I, I really need to learn about my puppy's like, pee and poop schedule. I need to learn about, you know, all of those things, but there's a few specific times that I know that I need to let the, take the puppy out for a pee. It would be when they wake up from a nap, when they play, when they've eaten. Um, you know, those are three, three very common times. Um, and I would try to prevent accidents by happening by being diligent about letting the puppy off outside often uh, however I don't maintain that forever because at some point I need to shift the responsibility to be uh, to the puppy and I think that's sort of what we're setting up here um, at the point in the video that we're going to see five's been home for a few weeks now and I'm now starting to no uh, no no isn't this when he starts he indicates the door yeah but yeah. that's not a few weeks that's this is like week one Really? Yeah. He did it that early? Look at him, yeah. Oh this my, is week one. Oh I actually God. have the videos time I didn't stamp. realize he was just so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. But it's it's because you were so yeah, consistent. Yeah, I, I, was, I was quite consistent. Yeah. And every time I would, and you read the dog's body language, so what would happen with him is I learned after a few days home that if he started to disconnect from me a lot or if he would like go away and start sniffing really frantically, I would go, mm, I wonder if he has to go to the bathroom. And I would say, do you have to go outside? Do you have to go outside? And we'd go through a little routine. I'd pick his line up. We'd go outside. And so he 
started to put together when I get that feeling like I have to go to the bathroom. Mom somehow magically sees that and then she takes me to this grass area outside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so he didn't have um, he didn't have any accidents the first couple weeks home because I was like on top of it. But again, you've got to supervise and uh, you'll notice he has a little house sign on too. Yeah, so uh, he's got his house line on. This is we we uh, set up a camera because I thought we might catch some interesting stuff. You can see there's Kale's probably making one of the videos that you guys have watched. But um, oh yeah, I am. I, this is people struggle with their house training, potty training, because they're not supervising closely enough, or they also, don't know what to look for. Look at for. my hair in that picture. Very fancy. Oh man. But they don't know what to look for, and I'm going to show you just how subtle the indication is. We talk about supervising your puppy so that they can start to let you know when they need to go out. Well, so many people miss this. Pay attention if you have a puppy that is in training for potty training, because this happens briefly. I'll stop the video. So puppy's just meandering about the kitchen, following Kale around. Kale's. Yeah. You know, doing Who her thing. Who knows what I'm doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have a drink. going to have some uh, Five Alive <laughs> juice because we drank a lot of that. Wait, wait, wait. Actually. Now, this is the moment when Five Alive looks at the door. Now, uh, we've been taking him out the same door over and over again. Great uh, uh, suggestion. It's good advice for anybody who's training their puppy, taking them out to the same door. Yeah. So they start to anticipate where, that, where, they, where they can go. Yeah. And this moment, the puppy looked at the door. Luckily, Kale was new to be paying attention, and he just sort of stops for a second, and then he looks back. In that moment, Kale captured that. I don't think I have the audio for this, but at this point, Kale says, oh, do you need to go outside? And then takes him out. Now, it started there, but then, um, you know, she, so she was consistent about taking him out, captured that moment. He learned that, oh, if I like indicate on the door a little bit, if I like point or stop or, you know, whatever, then she's going to take me outside. Yeah. Well, watch what this evolves to. Now, this this is a couple weeks later. The random cushion on the floor is because I was teaching him to go, go on and lie on it. <laughs> yeah. um, but you see, look at this. You can see something's up. Kale mentioned like he'd get a little disconnected. Maybe your puppy's like this. Maybe your puppy gets disconnected and they start to act a little silly and they're you're like, oh, what are you full of energy? And then they poop on the floor. Yeah. But I was kind of paying attention, but also kind of not. Yeah. But why? I mean, you how, you couldn't you couldn't have ignored or missed this. Like, see see how he's sort of frantic. Look, yeah. Oh, good puppy. Yeah. So and I in, thought, in that oh moment, oh my gosh, play it again from the beginning when yeah. he goes to the ball. Yeah. So he goes around to the door, and then he gets a bit distracted being a puppy. Like, oh, I don't know and what he's I like, need. I don't know what to do with myself. What, yeah. what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He goes I have to, to the, the door. bathroom. And in that moment, Kale recognized, oh, you need to go outside. And then, you can't hear this, but Kale says, the puppy just the puppy just indicated to go outside. Oh, yeah, I said it to the, uh, you said, the camera. You yelled it to me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I was upstairs and oh. yelled it to me, um, which was so cool. But that's what you get when you're consistent. That's what you get mm -hmm. when you're supervising. You see these little moments and people say like, oh, my dog will never learn. He's constantly having accidents in the house. Yep. You think about what, what you're doing when you're supervising them mm -hmm. and really pay, pay close attention. Biting and nipping, nipping prevention. Seven things puppy owners need to know. You need to understand nipping, what to do to not get them in that nipping state as well as like what to do when it happens. But nipping prevention is the first step. Let's talk about some of the things we never do with a young puppy if they have nipping and biting problems or if we're trying to avoid that uh, type of situation. Yeah, um, we're very careful about um, how we interact uh, with the puppies in terms of, you know, having a bump in our face or like getting down and wrestling them with, on the floor. We try not to put them in situations that could accidentally um, provoke the puppy to nip and bite or start to see us as like just one of their buddies that they can they can have fun with i know if i was to roll around on the floor my puppies always love to grab your hair well we would have litter of, of puppies i would often go in and play with them and they always want to grab my ponytail or grab the the tassels on your hoodie right. and all of those types of things and when they're really baby puppies you just let them be crazy and you don't really care but when they go into your home you don't want to be doing those types of things and just you know setting them up to be nipping and biting um it's important about how you handle them as well you know a lot of people are just so like handsy and it they don't realize that it sort of eggs the puppies on a little bit so you want to watch your reaction you also want to want to watch um the um 
opportunities that you give your puppy. So it could be like, you know, are you letting them up on the couch with you? Are you letting them in the bed with you? Um, because those are really easy locations that the puppies can get up in our face and, yeah. and get around or they feel a little bit more elevated. And so they puppy burn on the couch or they puppy burn on the bed and then the nipping and biting starts. Um, so we avoid those things in the early stages so that they're just not being able to rehearse. Uh, I would prefer to make choices that prevent my puppies from nipping me rather than having my puppy nip me and then have to discipline them for that. That does happen, of course, because puppies are puppies, but it happens very, very, um, a very small amount in comparison to just management choices that we make. But things like the crate, things like the line, all of those things are going to help um, prevent the nipping more so than if you don't have those things. And having your house line on is going to be valuable. I mentioned it earlier. Did you talk about this already? I was sort of paying attention to this. Nope. Okay. Having your house line on is going to give you more control. You, you're able to like redirect the puppy. They're able to have some control of the puppy while they're, uh, I think it was, I forget who mentioned it. Uh, Sarah maybe mentioned like, oh no, so somebody mentioned their puppy piranha teeth was like, were very sharp. And you're right. So having that house line, being able to step on the house line and redirect the puppy away will save you uh, gallons of blood. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what you'd, how you'd respond. I'm training. listening to the dogs back there uh, and wondering how, what's happening. How much, everybody's having a drink. Um, training. How much training are you doing with your puppy? Like what? So not let's not talk about the first week home. Let's talk about like the first month. Like how, how many minutes a day go into training, would you say? Ooh. Mm. I don't really know how many minutes uh, exactly, but I would say that my puppies get actively trained um, at least three times every single day yep. that and, entire time for and, short periods of time. Yeah. So like maybe sometimes it could be five minutes, sometimes it could be 10 minutes, sometimes it could be 25 minutes. It depends Depending on, on the puppy. Oh, and also like how much time I have. Totally. Sometimes I don't, I can't spend 25 minutes three times a day. Um, so if I say, okay, I have 10 minutes to like take the puppy out and tire them out, that will de depict what I do with them. I might go out and do like restraint recalls to a uh, tug toy or something that I can get a lot of bang for my buck in a small period of time so yeah. that I feel less guilty when I have to shove them back in the crate and get on a Zoom call really quickly. Totally, yeah. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do. But my puppies got a lot more... Um, uh, when they're out of the crate, they get a lot more interaction and sort of, um, um, what's the word? Uh, engagement? No, not, yes, engagement, deliberate. Deliberate engagement, uh, rather than like just hanging around the house. My puppies don't do a lot of yeah. hanging around the house. Yeah, they're that's basically good. in the crate, they come out, they're doing something with me, yeah. and then we're tiring out, we're learning, we're doing things, and then I put them away. They don't have a lot of like, just hang out time. The only, I would say the most common times that our puppies would hang out and just chill out would be like at nighttime yep. before they go in their crate for because, their nap. But they've already, they, they already had three or four training right. sessions. Because they're tired by then. Yeah. People yeah. say, oh, my puppies are so crazy at night. Well, our puppies aren't crazy at night because they're exhausted by the time, so the time that comes. And then they can, you know, sit with us and chew on a bone and be a little calmer. And there's there was times where, like I said to you, I was sat down, we would watch a movie and we'd have five with us. And I'd be like, I'm going to try this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give him 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> and sometimes but that is he'd training. settle. That's literally training. And sometimes he wouldn't. Yeah. And I would just put him in the crate so yeah. he couldn't rehearse being, you know, a, a wild man. But then the more we did it, the more he realized, oh, okay, this is the routine. So that's yeah. part of training. That too. is training. I mean, if you just sort of look at this like okay even the snuggle time is training then yeah. it really it sort of changes how you're thinking about your engaging with your puppy how you're you know the expectation you have for you know the nipping and biting the uh you know ability to lie down and just be rewarded or have a chew bone or have yeah. a pet whatever that thing is it it's really i, I love uh, that idea that like even that is training but training sessions are short sweet they're very intentional mm -hmm. and uh you know, the puppy gets a couple of, a handful of them every day, but they're just a few minutes long. That, that, cause that can fit into any schedule. If you've got a puppy, mm -hmm. you're gonna have these like three, four times throughout the day that maybe once uh, before you make dinner, whatever. When you, when you normally sit down, go on your phone, go on TikTok or whatever and watch Netflix, spend five minutes doing some of the puppy training. We have a million videos, yeah. not literally, but we have several hundred videos available that'll give you tips for doing little things that'll burn up some of that puppy energy, also be valuable for training. And, and just, you'll end up with a, uh, 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 your, your puppy's gonna start making better choices. I shouldn't say that. 
your puppy won't make as many bad choices if you are, you know, spending time with them, engaging with them, also getting rid of some of that energy. They're less likely to choose the bad stuff. Okay. Next thing we talk about is socialization. Uh, we uh, do not socialize our puppies with other dogs. So socialization is not about interaction. It's about experience. So when we have a puppy and we... Uh, well, we should... We should be more specific about that term okay. because we, we do, but we don't. Right. Okay. So we, we don't socialize our puppies when they're very, very young with random puppies that we do not know. Right. Um, number one, vaccines. Number two, we have no idea what those puppies are like. Um, we also don't allow our young puppies to be like, if you have a household of other dogs as well, they're not immediately integrated into the house just you know, acting the same way the other dogs do all of the time. They're separated. And then, um, for example, Five was around my older dogs oh, when he was a puppy, but I would be like having him lie on a bed and then my other dogs would be milling around and I would reward him for not jumping on their head. So he was around them, but he wasn't just like, it wasn't like a free for all and he wasn't driving them crazy. He was learning how to be respectful and how to learn to interact with them and not bother them. And everybody gets along in harmony. Um, there was a few times where I would let him can play with other friends puppies but completely supervised for a short period of time but we would also spend time um training i have a my best friend has a puppy who's a little bit older than five and we would get together every single week and we would go on either sides of the field and she would train her puppy here and i would train my puppy here and they would have a heck of a time initially trying to pay attention to us and we would just move further away and that was to me socialization five was learning my buddy's over there but right now I have to pay attention to mom instead. Yeah. And, you know, we would go to different locations. Again, exposure. So that is what we mean by socialization. So many people get so stuck on my puppy needs to play with other dogs. They actually don't. No. They need to learn that you're the best and yeah. they need to be around. They, when we say we don't um, socialize them, in that way, our puppies aren't living inside our house and never getting to see the light of day. Of they are, are probably doing more exposure than the average than the average person does with their dogs. Um, but we just we we do not focus on a lot of dog to dog interaction yeah. in the early stages because we know um, all of the things that that all the problems that will come from that. Maybe I need to find a better way to communicate it then because for me, it, it's not about interaction. It's about experience. Makes yeah. sense and it's very clear. Let me know in the chat if that makes sense to you. If what Kale, if it's not about interaction, it's about experience is yeah. what you just heard from Kale. I'd be interested to know. Maybe well, I, need I think to if we say like we don't, so we don't socialize our puppies with other dogs, yeah. puppies can be like how old, how old puppies? Right, like, right. are we talking like six, are we talking right. about four months, five months, six months, 10 yeah, months? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it, it, they yeah. are interacting yeah. with it, other it, dogs. In my know? mind, 16 weeks is like no longer a puppy. baby puppies, yeah. 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 Well, lots of people say, I have a puppy. And we say, okay, how old? And they're like, like 13 months. And I you're know. like, mm, not yeah. a puppy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> not yeah. a puppy anymore. We need to talk. So there's seven things. We talked about the shopping list, color and line, why you use it, a crate, house training, potty training, nipping prevention, which is just, which is more important than what to do in the, Puppy biting mm -hmm. happens because it allows you to like set these situations up. Training, how much, how long, how often. And socialization, what it really means for your puppy. Now, we have something special to do. Something really important. Yeah. Very important. We held a Halloween contest. And on social, on Instagram? Instagram and Facebook. And we want to announce the winners tonight. There were such good submissions. I'm always so impressed when... People send us this these things. Uh, this year is no different. Wait till you see these. So we have three three different categories: most creative, cuteness, and uh, uh, like human and dog. Human dog. That's right. Yeah, yeah. like human, com human, combination human co and dog um, team. costume. Yeah. So we'll go from uh, third to first in each category. So most creative costume. Uh, third place: Ty the Beanie Baby from Sarah and Ariel. Golden Retriever. Do you have the other picture by chance? I don't. I don't oh, so one. if you see, I'll, I'll post these on Instagram as well. Yeah. But uh, on the back of the of the tie, of the ty tie, I don't even know what is it. Tie. Tie. I think I should know this, but anyways, on the back of that heart, she wrote out like what they do on the actual oh, beanie baby, cool. which is very very cute. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. Sue, drop okay, in the super creative. chat. Sue, we're gonna get back to this. I love this question. Um, first, we just need to acknowledge these amazing. Amazing students. Very creative. And, and, and uh, Sarah and Ariel. Absolutely. Congratulations. Third place, most creative. Second place, Zero the Ghost. 
<laughs> a Siberian Husky and a YouTube super fan. What a good dog to I endure know. that. Oh, so good. I love that. That picture. is awesome. I so think this good. is from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. I think so. A movie, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Nice job. So uh, good. Zero the ghost. She also included in like the slides how she actually made the costume. Oh, oh which I was, think I saw Which was that. very impressive. Yeah. I thought this is very creative. Yeah. They should be in the creative costume. Fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> First place, creative this costume. Hysterical. Kale, Kale McDoodle. Oh, my God. So there were multiple pictures that came with this one. This one uh, yeah. highlighted Yeah, this was the best. cutest one for sure because Maisie looks absolutely adorable. But, uh, again, in this one, Amanda went oh, all right. out. She had um, she had Maisie holding a little bee toy, so it was like Kale and Bee. It was my dog's name, yeah. Bee, which was so cute. And in one of the pictures, she had like a blue hair clip. As well, since I have blue in my hair, too. Yeah. So funny, so Amanda. This is hysterical. Oh, Absolutely so love it. She's an online Congratulations. Student. So, for cuteness, we're going <laughs> flat-out cuteness now for these costumes. Congratulations. Third place, Lily the Bernadoodle. Farmer Lily. Look at her. Oh, so adorable, eh? Oh, my YouTube gosh. YouTube super fan. Uh, and you can see if they included, uh, if, if you guys included your uh, Instagram tag. Yep. Then we it's on here. So uh, go check out at Lily dot the Bernadoodle. Uh, such a cute costume. Oh, oh Amanda's man. on. I'm so glad. Yeah. Oh, great. Yay, Amanda. Good for you. Congratulations. Sheer she and had, G. Um, Maisie the, the sheepadoodle on the last one. So cute. Sheer and G dropping the super sticker. Thank you for that. <laughs> Changing the lights. Lily's in the face station. in this picture is so funny. She's so unimpressed. I know. It's so cute. She's like, fine. I'll be a farmer. Wait till you see the next one. Also cute. So cute. Katie and Winnie. Second place for the cuteness co co cutest costume. Boston Bumblebee. Katie and Winnie. Boston uh, Terrier. Online life skills. The cutest thing about this is how horrified and irritated that Winnie is. I know. That, to be in that costume. That's what actually made it even cuter. So <laughs> cute. Oh, it's, it's easier to see it on her monitor. Yes. Um, so cute, though. And we look at her little face. I can't thank you guys enough for like sending this stuff. You know, so much. We're so focused on like training, training, training. We're constantly training. And we're making YouTube videos about training that this is like the fun stuff that we don't, you know, normally get to see. So if you're doing stuff at home, tag us on the different social things at McCann Dogs in most cases uh, because we love to see this, especially when it comes to our costume contest because you guys go all out. Like it's just so cute. Okay. Cowgirl, Caitlin and Artemis, Toy Aussie, online life skill student. First place. Look at that. Oh my god. She like is loving it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. It's the face. So cute. Oh my gosh. So Her little cute. face. She's I know. adorable. A happy dog. I can't these dogs were so great to just like sit and endure this. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this next uh, category, so that we've we've shown our creative, most creative costumes, the cuteness factor, and now it's human dog, human and dog team. Yeah, is the next category. Love this. So uh, this is an important one for us because this we know it's the teamwork that makes the dream work. It, it, you know, we, we know that. So we need to dive into our human dog team costumes. And first up, I know her. Courtney with Ella and Ivy, Great Danes. <laughs> her and her little horses. Yeah, what a great picture. I mean, those guys are almost as big as horses. Courtney has fa fantastic uh, costumes every single year with her dogs. Yeah. In fact, uh, she's an instructor at her school, new instructor at her school, um, but she's a longtime student, and she um, uh, was in rally this week, our rally classes, and part of their graduations, they had to come up with a routine, yeah. and they had to dress up and do it to music and like do the whole thing, yeah, and so yeah. she wore this, and then her dog did the entire routine dressed as a horse. Oh, really? Yeah, it was oh, great. awesome. Often, <laughs> Instructor Carol, who you guys might know from the channel, has uh, rally obedience classes in our school. So creative. And uh, yeah, she'll often have like music and like fun Challenges dress ups. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Good oh, job, congratulations, Court. Courtney. Uh, second place. Ivy and Ella are her dog's names. And, and, and Rose. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Also Rosie. cowboy themed. Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Yep. Uh, also cowboy themed. So cute. Yeah, Cowboys was a popular popular thing. Probably that show with Kevin Costner, whatever that's called. Oh, again. maybe. Yellowstone. Maybe yes. that's inspired. I don't know. Cute. Yeah, very cute. Uh, extra touch with the saddle. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and coming in first place. This is so great. Human and dog team costumes. 
<laughs> Alex and Cardi. That is a scary, that is like a scary picture. They did picture. such a good job of taking the picture like on an angle down. I know. Oh yeah. my God, Cordy, so I, cute. I love that Cordy's got the red balloon. I know. Oh, that's such a great He's touch. It's adorable. Such a cool touch. That's great. Yeah. That's really good. I love it. Very love cool. It. Congratulations, everybody. And thank you guys for sending us your amazing pictures. We uh, Every year we get excited. The whole team, like in, in, in person, online, digital, like the YouTube team, everybody gets pumped to see them. So thank you guys for sending them. We'll be doing it again next year. And we're, so we're looking forward to that. Now, did you have anything to add? Uh, I did not. Okay. We have a couple of Super Chats. So from Sue K, uh, Sue says... Uh, my seven months sometimes has days where he just does not want to focus on me. Teenage stuff. Do I take a day off train uh, off from training hard when this happens? I love this question. Um, no, Sue, you don't. Right. Um, that's a good question. Sometimes you might feel like you want to, and I'm actually not saying sometimes, you know, it's not the end of the world to just, you know, take a break, but what we don't want to do is just let our dogs do whatever that day. So, you know, maybe you have a little bit less interaction. Maybe you have things that are a little bit more controlled that day so that you're not pushing the boundaries. Maybe you practice around less distractions. You know, when we're having challenges that you want to figure out ways to make it easier for your dog, whether that means go back in progressions, whether that means, um, don't train for such a long time. Where are you training? Can you minimize the distractions a little bit? But when dogs go through the teenage phase, adolescence, all dogs go through that, it's really important that you keep training through it because sometimes dogs learn, oh, I can push my boundaries in that, this situation yeah. and then I can kind of get away with it because there's no follow through. Um, and then it's it's harder to fix. So it is important that you uh, work through it. Seven months old, it's a common time. They start to, to push the boundaries a little bit. They do it right up until they're over a year old sometimes at different stages depending on the dog. So, um, you know, it is something that happens, but you just you need to just roll up your sleeves and work through it. Sharon G with the Egyptian Pound, uh, 379.99. Uh, Thank you for the super sticker. <laughs> that's a, that's, I haven't seen that guy before, that controller one. No. It's pretty cool. It's a new one. Um, okay, Cat Calico, it's a fun name. Uh, Cat Calico, suggestions for training condo puppies to potty outside, finally fully vaccinated and peeing outside 95% of the time, uh, but she won't poop outside. We go outside after everything and she will hold uh, there. Till I get hold it until we get home. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the dogs having trouble uh, pooping outside. What, what strategies, things do you think a cat could implement? Um, yeah, that could be challenging. Uh, yeah. For sure. Con condos with puppies is, is a hard thing. Um, I would try to uh, focus on, you know, knowing when your dog's poop schedule is. Most puppies will, will poop in the morning. Um, so I would try to make sure that you're try to push things a little bit more in the morning when you know they have to go. Um, walking your puppy sometimes can sort of stimulate things and can get them to go a little bit more. If you um, do, don't end up getting the puppy to poop outside in the morning, I would bring your puppy back in, but I would actually put them right back into their crate. Yeah. Don't let them just sort of be around in the house because they'll be way more likely to have an accident. I might put them in their crate and give them a couple minutes five minutes 10 minutes even and hopefully what will happen is they'll start fussing a little bit and then you can go back outside to, to try for a poop again and i would just keep at it until um until you get success but what you don't want to do is run into a problem where you're starting to get some body accidents because you're not getting it outside and then you're coming in and just sort of letting the puppy be um so in and out of the crate a little bit which i recognize is not super easy when you have a life to do but it's a it's a short a short-lived process before before you can fix we we talked about this the other day, actually, when we had a dog, someone uh, dropped their dog off for, it was a, maybe for a YouTube video or for, maybe it was a Piper lesson, I don't remember. But um, we talked about uh, how engaging that puppy playing tug could stimulate mm -hmm. a bowel movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, sometimes that's all it takes. It was um, Meg's puppy that we used for the Saturday that's right, video. That's right. The little border so, collie puppy. So, yeah, absolutely. So sometimes playing, uh, you know, playing something like tug, uh, McCann Dog's puppy tug like playing with that dog is just enough like get them moving around and get them exercising and active and then all of a sudden they realize like oh by the way i forgot i had to go and then you can take them out sometimes i think that um you know when the puppies are on going on their walks there's just so much there and you know they, they get distracted and you know they're excited about getting back inside maybe getting a drink of water or whatever but if you take that moment outside before you go back in and as kel mentioned it's critical that you mm -hmm. put your puppy if you 
think they have to poo, they need to go in their kennel if or their crate if you if you're not supervising. Um, but sometimes that play, like maybe it's you know game of tug or like a little thing of fetch, whatever it is. Getting them active can really help them to go. So take advantage of that. We saw it literally in practice just the other day uh, at the studio. Yeah. Super helpful. Super helpful. Now, uh, was there one more? I don't think Super Chat. I don't think so. Are you sure? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank thank you guys for joining us. I hope we, if we missed your Super Chat, we'll uh, send you, I'll be able to send you a message um, or a video uh, as required. Do you need? Oh. Yeah, maybe I'm, I, I imagined it. Okay. I thought it came up while we were asking, but I, I think I just was Kale's seeing imagining things. questions. Yeah. On that note, I want to thank you guys for joining us here in the show. Remember, Saturday's video. I'm telling you, as a puppy owner, you're going to want to check it out. We talk a lot about, uh, you know, uh, you know what? Make sure you're there. It's a good one. You're going to find it valuable. Yep. We only have a few more train stations left in this season. Can you believe it? I can believe it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. With all of the teaching, all of the training, all of the things that we've talked about tonight, the rest of my friends, well, that is up to you. We do these live streams to educate you, but more importantly, to motivate you. You can have the dog that you've always wanted, but it's just going to take you a little bit of work. I would know because I was just like you. Long before I became a dog trainer, I was a frustrated dog owner, but the skills that I learned at McCann's changed my life. Now we have hundreds of videos here on our YouTube channel to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. But if you want someone to guide you through the dog training process, then you should check out our Puppy Essentials program for puppies under six months. If your dog is over six months, then you could join our Life Skills program and our instructors are gonna help to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible in a really supportive environment. Now, all of the knowledge about dog training in the world won't help you to be successful unless you get up and you start training. The real question is, what are you gonna train next? Happy training.